everyone, this is Victoria from When the Ancients Speak. Uh, today we were going to talk about a couple of things that we think are pretty important for you to know with all the uh, activity that people are starting to see in the sky now. I'm not sure if any of the family are That's, going to yeah, be doing... I'll, I'll probably oh, yeah. be yeah. shut. Stephen A. Jones here again, <laughs> folks. Um, you know, I can't keep my, my yapper shut. <laughs> and I'm sort of the spokesperson of all the other hey, idiots yeah. behind me here, so... Shut up, Stephen! Um, yeah, see, that, that, this is how I get treated. All I'm trying to do is help. I want to expand your mind and the universe. So um, I guess uh, we'll let Victoria start because, you know, she's kind of got an idea here. We're going to be talking about some really cool stuff today about spheres and uh, the, the forge worlds and, and how they work and, and uh, all that other fun stuff. Right, Victoria? Yeah, some of you already know about these forge machines. We've spoken about them before, but... Uh, for those of you who are new to the Facebook page, I want to thank you for joining us, first of all. The page is kind of going a little bit at a steam pace now, and I think because people are finally, finally starting to realize that what I've been trying to show you for many, many months is actually coming to pass. So if you've been looking at some of the uh, YouTube videos of late, including Secure Team, who put up a video about these spheres, I had a big smirk on my face because for weeks now, months, almost, no, it's been over a year now, I've been watching these spheres, but I've just been watching the activity in the sky from, and I particularly picked one place to go to so that we had a, like a living record on Facebook of what's been transpiring. And we went and st I started looking at all the Alaskan weather cams and man have I uncovered a hornet's nest. Yeah, hi everybody, this is Mike. <laughs> wow. When Victoria started actually looking at some of the weather cams, you know, the government weather cams that stream this stuff, um, I have to tell you, initially at first I'm like, yeah, whatever. And, you know, she kept showing me just some stuff. Okay, hey, there's a lot of chemtrails here. Look at this stripe thing over here. And from that point, it just got progressively much more interesting. Things began to appear in the sky that I have never seen in my lifetime. And I'm certain all of you have never seen in your lifetime either. So what really amazed me the most about all of this was the fact that finally we have records and, and not our records, not the records of somebody else, but records that you can actually check for yourself and see these things. Remember, these are, the, the stuff is appearing on multiple cameras. So it's kind of a check and a balance to make sure that what you're seeing is actually real or have they manipulated some of this stuff? Maybe. But when you have eight, nine, or ten cameras that all agree from different angles and different locations that something is there, Finally, we have the proof to show people because people simply have so much cognitive dissonance, they just can't get past themselves and they can't believe that they're actually seeing this stuff. And yet here is the proof and here it is triple checked on different levels. So you have to come to a point to where you really want to start saying, well, is this real? Is what, what am I seeing here? Is this real? Here's what we were doing the other morning. Aaron and I were sitting down and talking about all of this technology in the sky. And he just said to me, So, Hedda, it's the name he calls me by, did you finally come to realize that the sun and the moon and all the technology up there is the illusion of what it's supposed to be? Now, see, what's happened is the the darkened entities have actually put an overlay over the planet and this is all created by them. What you're supposed to be seeing is what the creator of all actually put out there for us. And you're starting to see little snippets of those colors and they're beautiful and you're amazed by them. Uh, yeah, this is Stephen Jones again here. I'm, uh, I'm kind of jonesing at this topic here because um, let me tell you what is in store for some of you people. You're going to love it, okay? It's not just doom and gloom, gloom and harvesting and the end of the world. Yes, don't worry, all that's coming, you know, in different degrees, but not for all of us. And, and, and if those of you have been following all this, you know what we're talking about. So, what I want you to think about is this. Can you imagine 
If there has been an overlay surrounding the world, sort of like a big silver screen, and then they could project anything they wanted there. We're seeing breaks, we're seeing stars, we're seeing other things that are now visible to us that we haven't been able to see. And the rift that you're seeing, it's not that you can't see the universe. You can actually see through this overlay. You're actually seeing through different dimensional levels. Yes. You're not actually, it's, you have to kind of start thinking about this in a, in a dimensional aspect because it won't make sense unless you do. But you are seeing through this covering. It's sort of like a translucent covering, if you, if you want to think of it that way. And, but yet they can project things on this translucent cover and they can also cause it to create spheres across the cover which then drop down from the skies and they can begin to create all kinds of weather. Everything on this planet is controlled by aliens. I'm sorry, there really is no natural weather patterns. There are devices that create natural weather patterns. Right. Yes, so what you've been experiencing have been for, for you know tens and tens of thousands and millions of years, you've been experiencing weather and other phenomena that is created by these programmable machines. Think about that. Everything in the world, sunlight, rain, uh, windstorms, especially, and, and the tornadoes, you can actually see some of the machinery nowadays. They're actually, you're having problems keeping them uh, cloaked. Yes. So all of these things are a creation, but yet it's designed to work seamlessly in this, oh, let's call it a zoo. Well, after all, if you're going to create a zoo, really good zoos create natural-looking trees and waters. You know, you see, the, you, you see the tigers in there, and they've got everything they need. It looks like a section of the jungle until you hit the glass wall. Hey, wait a minute. This isn't a jungle, and there's people looking in at us. What the hell is that? <laughs> so th that's what we are, people. That's, you know what? That's so funny you should say that because now that I see it, in the sky well I, I don't know what you call it it's not even a sky if we've got like this big i look at us now this is the way i'm looking at us guys and if you can do it's, the same it's like the truman show yes it's like the truman show and how cute was that but anyway i do want to say that you have to let go of these misconceptions that you've had all this religious doctrine, all of this political stuff, because what's going on right now with our government is a circus and it's a distraction for what's really going on upstairs. So you need to be watching that because after I've been in looking at these photographs of the Alaskan weather cams, I started seeing something that I hadn't really looked at before and that was chemtrails are not just to squash us like bugs, but they are also there to hide this technology. And after they're sprayed, we get these like coding. They, they, they did that because it started breaking down about 15 years ago, so that's when you started really seeing the chemtrails, because they had to do it lightly at first. And of course, they've got other things in the chemtrails that are designed to do things on this planet, mm. which they're actually terraforming the planet um, because they're trying to make the planet have a different type of, of vegetation and a bunch of other things that they can control. Yeah. Uh, that's why they're creating all these genetically modified products because it's all tied into a super AI which will be able to control everything and already is. Uh, oh, and another thing. Uh, the well, DNA. Yeah. Well, you can tell them, Victoria. I was going to say something else, but No, that's you okay. go ahead and talk I'm, about I'm the DNA. I'm all done now. I'm done now. You sure? When you interrupted me. I apologize. You're right. I shouldn't have done it. Come back and oh, talk. Oh, don't worry about it. She's a bit of a bitch anyhow sometimes. <laughs> Who was that? This is jerk. I think it was a bitch guy. Who was the female that came? Who was that? That's what I told you. This is Lula. My apologies, Lula. Yeah. That, you know that. That's what Lula. Do you want to continue? No. Okay. All right. So I guess Lula is going to let me do, oh, do oh, oh, oh. Lula, right, she's going to allow me to finish this. So what we've come to learn is uh, recently I made a post about the chemtrails and the DNA and the black goo. Okay. Now we've talked about all of this before, but let me reiterate what we were talking about previously. That is they want to combine our DNA with technology, as most of you are already understanding. 
but when they mutate the DNA, it enables this process quicker and easier. Yeah, and they're going to make you, they want to make humans, different kinds of humans, like different, you know, you know, like how the military makes different kinds of planes? Well, that's what they want to do. And then they'll be like, you know, this is a, this is our repair human. This is our, our, our cybernetics human. This is our, our servo droid human. And this is part of what they're doing. They're going to bring it all together. And when they're done, um, a lot of us are going to be almost like, I guess like the, what you say, the Borg? They're going to be like the Borg on Star Trek. If you guys haven't seen that, you, you can look it up. Um, cause I get to watch TV so you guys die sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Um, and we have our own shows we like too. Yeah, no, you guys have your own movie theaters. You, yeah, we do. We have different movies. Well, I'm also talking about the shows we, we make them watch here. Mm -hmm. Sorry. You do it through crystals, right? Yeah, that, but I mean also through here. Yeah. And like we say, hey, Victoria, I want you to put on Netflix and, you know, I want to watch something. Yeah. I, I like South Park. I think it's, well. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty bad. We do watch South Park and make jokes. A lot of times Victoria's working on something, she just, you see her frowning out and put her headset on. Yeah, she gets really sick of it after a while. I don't blame her, you know. We can be really big-ass jerks, but that, that, that's what we do. <laughs> they do, you know. They put this South Park on, and I, and I find it, some of the themes in it are just revolting, and I really, I have a problem with it. And so... <laughs> What's wrong with South Park? <laughs> It's funny, and they tell the truth, too. Yes, actually, they do, even though it is, you know, sponsored by, you know, corporations back end and putting all this stuff in there. But the, the whole thing is that they're telling us the truth in comedy because it sounds so ridiculous. It's the only way they can reach us and, and, and talk when, to us. Plus, when you're happy and laughing, it opens up parts of your mind that you can then be forced to have. Um, uh, they put these thoughts in your head that way. That's yeah. one of the things they do. That's why they switch to digital, uh, from analog to digital, because now they know uh, these beings now can uh, appear through your, be projected through your television, or they can disappear or choose not to be seen. That's what the digital gives them, because it's the same frequency wavelength that they are, some of the darker beings who control your world. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, one showed up at... On a Lady Gaga's the idea, you know, Part of the idea they had was originally from the movie Poltergeist. You remember the little girl put her hands on the TV mm -hmm. and, and they were talking about that stuff? They thought it was funny, but back then they even knew that that was going on. That's mm -hmm. what the story was written for, is to put a, 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 deep, a deep psychological embed. That's what Michael says sometimes, a deep psychological embed. Deep psychological embed into your mind that in the future the demons and powerful beings can come through black objects or, or screen objects like televisions. Do you notice that the shape of the televisions mm. are all square mm. it's designed that way for a reason because the old scrying uh, mirrors that they used to use and people like Nostradamus and stuff would use special kinds of stones made out of obsidian that That's look right. like the, the picture of a TV so That's it's all right. for the conductivity and now they're putting black goo into things especially phones it's a tiny little drop but it's an intelligent thing and it'll control everything it's starting to control people and it's starting with their moods and eventually alter the way they think and pretty soon uh, we'll have people that literally will be zombies it's true and, and people think you're crazy, but it, and you see all the scientists are coming out now. That's why they're starting 5G. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, that's Christ, a long-winded bitch. <laughs> well, well, she did say a lot of good stuff, though, but... Come on, guys. Don't be mean to each other. Well, you know, I don't like being called a bitch. Yeah, I'm a, you're a bitch. <laughs> that's it. I'm sorry. Thank you. Come on. We're supposed to be setting an example here. Look, we're just giving them information. They probably think you're crazy anyhow, so who cares? So this is how we look at it. Fuck you guys, too, okay? I mean, you know, not fuck you guys, but just say, hey, 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 fuck you guys. But, you know, we're, we're here to tell the truth. It doesn't matter how it gets into your head. If it's the truth, then you can go out and check it and see what we're saying is right, and you can find out, and then, oh, my goodness, you'll be one of the conspiracy duties. What are they calling it? Conspiracy fruitcake or something? Yep, but, yes. all this, but, but they're all right. They're all right. Do you understand? They know the truth. And what did they say in that one movie in 2012? Yeah. It's that exciting moment when you find out that all the nutbags holding up the sign saying the end of the world were right all along. <laughs> you see, now listen, guys. Remember, we, we say to you all the time, this is them. This is who they are. They have personalities. Huh? Don't be offended because they're just telling you the truth. Yeah, you don't have to listen to us. I mean, but I bet you are. I bet you're wondering. You go, you know... Maybe they're not so crazy. Maybe they're crazy like a fox. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Oh, the, this is Charles. Uh, hey, Stephen, um, you were right about some of this stuff, so it's nice to tell people these things. They really need to know, and, well, so does everybody. So, um, I just think uh, that it's beautiful that you can tell people stuff and help them. Yeah, but there's a lot of false stuff out there, too. And, and, you know, people say, well, that goes for you guys, too. Well, okay, but all you have to do with us is just listen to the information. And if it actually makes sense to yeah, what I mean, you're we're, seeing... Yeah, we're not asking you to believe that, you know, you're actually talking to spirits here. Yeah, take that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you for the microphone. <clears throat> but, but, but what we're saying here today is that yeah, just just listen to what we're saying and follow up on that information. I mean, all all of you out there are smart people, aren't you? I, well, maybe there's one or two of you that maybe could use a little help. But um, I, I'm I'm here to tell you that uh, you're intelligent people. Don't believe everything. You're choking on the water over there. Yeah. And um, don't believe something until you research it yourself and find out. And then uh, so we look at this as as, as sort of a. Uh, uh, a, a kind of a binary situation here. There's two good things about this. Even if you think we're just nutcakes putting this stuff out on the internet, that's fine because you're getting the information one way or the other. So, And if you do believe us, just imagine how much more you're going to know and the other things that you can do to, to make really positive changes in your life. We have a lot of information we want to give you guys about things like spiritual constructs and, and how you can use your, your native intelligence to open up all of these abilities. Victoria and Michael really aren't that unique. All of you have the abilities to do these things, including connect to the spiritual realm. Now, I know you've been told since day one not to do it, right? Because we're supposedly evil beings and we're, we're going to... Well, yes, that does exist. But it's actually the evil beings that created all these religions to tell you not to connect to other spiritual beings so that you could never be freed. Do you understand you need to be free? You have to be able to make your own choices, do things. But it's very difficult when you've been programmed since birth to believe certain things that are not true, but they all make sense with the overlay. But the overlay is cracked, and we can see through it. We're starting to see the pipes and machinery behind it all, and the steam that's making it all works. And these sentient spheres that are coming to this planet are here to fix things as well. You have to think of it almost like you're inside of a human body. That's what the universe is. Now, that's the creator's body, right? And we're just one small part of it. So what happens when there is a cut? somewhere when you get a cut as a human being well you bleed but then eventually it heals over and begins to be fixed by all the micro you know a micro uh whatever those little thingies are that fix everything in your body right yeah. so um well it's the same thing here on this planet when there are issues all of these other devices turn on these spheres are activated but yet now we've got the uh, fleet that has arrived yeah. and continues to arrive the liberation fleet yeah. uh, well guess what Guess what? They're controlling some of the machinery. Now, some of this may sound, you're, well, how does this connect? Use your head here. Think about this. Should you believe what you see with your eyes? Yes and no. Yes, if it seems to be something bizarre and unusual you've never seen before, odds are that's some of the machinery and sentient beings that you're seeing. If it makes sense to you from your world, for example, if the image of Jesus Christ suddenly appeared in the sky with a booming voice telling you to uh, worship uh, the Vatican, for example, um, use your head, okay? There's going to be a lot of trickery and skullduggery going on because they want to convince a majority of you to remain on the planet when the great diaspora comes. So there's a lot more to this, people, and we're going to get more and more into it. And it's an exciting time because now the truth is out. And you have the opportunity now to truly change your lives and make things amazing and even step into the next dimension. And believe me, you're needed there. You are going to be the movers and shakers of the universe. All of you are superior, and you've been trained. You've been trained by going through this life after life to be ready to be great rulers of the universe. Wow. You guys have been very... We've been, <clears throat> we've been very active today. Yeah. That's, that's what they say. And, and that's, what, um, that's what I heard Ryan say the other day. He said, you, you, there's, there's a lot of activity going on. 
Absolutely. Hey. Hey, can we make a movie like Paranormal Activity? <laughs> we could do all that stuff. Oh. <laughs> yes. I mean, not the bad stuff, though. Oh, my God. I just realized what I said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we don't want that stuff. <laughs> we don't. But we do have things happening. Well, it, it, well we always play with the TV and then we turn that on and off. And then we like playing with the switches and the lights. And everyone's like, well, why do you do that? Well, because it's fun for us. It's like, why, why do you sit at your computer for hours on Facebook? Mm -hmm. Okay? That, you know? And she'll go out and garden and stuff. And now uh, she's growing. She's growing pot. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Do we have to put that up there on the air? Um, no, you probably edit it out later. That's okay. Oh, it's just one plant. Just to see if you can do it. It's not like guys are, you know, potheads or nothing. No, they're not. Oh, my goodness. You see, that you, you girls are always doing this. Sometimes you say this crap and, oh, I gotta go talk to someone. Yeah, see, yeah, well, anyway, they are very active today. Yes, they are. And we are just talking right now. We're talking about these whole spheres. We're talking about uh, where they came from, how they were. Okay, so let's talk about how they were created forge because world. the Forge Worlds. Now here, I put a post up two days ago or yesterday actually about the Forge machines. And we've spoken about this before, but it's very interesting if you understand how powerful the universe and the way it is created really works. I mean, we have to step out of that lock brain syndrome and start opening your awareness to the fact that we are all dimensional beings. So, guys, I want you to think about this. And it's not just me saying this. Other people before have said it. Well, I'll see if I can get a word in edgewise today here. Holy cow. It's just flowing out of me. Um, so what I wanted to ask people, if any of you ever had wood shop, or even if you haven't, I'm sure you've seen a lathe, and you know what a lathe is. Um, if you take, like, a tree trunk, you know, like a cut section of a tree trunk and put it on a lathe, you can then spin it at high speed, and you can work the cutting knives to shape this into an object. And, for example, a round object. Well, we wanted to point out something, and, and Victoria has in her posts, about um, the fact that one of the things they've tried to hide from us, because this is proof that what we're saying is true, is that <laughs> there are two very large holes essentially on top of or on bottom of the planet. And most planets have this. This is a unique mark, and there are actually caps that are put on top of these holes when they're done for some planets, which is why you get this hexagonal shape around some planets on the north and south yeah. poles. And they're like, well, how is that random? We even, this information actually exists through NASA. You can see some of this stuff, believe it or not. I know about this. And, and well, of course, but yeah. I'm saying normally they airbrush all this stuff out. I mean, they're experts at airbrushing. NASA was put there solely for the purpose to hide all of this yeah. as long as possible. Because they, it would go contrary to the belief if you you discovered that, hey, this earth has been hollowed out, and you can actually see the tool marks of what used to be a big blob of material that sat on a huge forge world spindle that over hundreds of years is turned with materials added to it, and it is shaped into a world, and then it is inserted with a hot core, which is usually essentially a small sun that is used to jumpstart the process of the planet. And this is where the magma cycle begins, where the planets then begin to take over their own evolution. And then the aliens come and shape each planet into what the plan is, because they've been given a plan by the creator, yes, by the creator, to do certain types of work and to populate the universe and the dimensions with these worlds for all of his creations. Mm -hmm. Now, if our Creator has done that for us, why could anyone not believe that there must be a multitude of aliens, a multitude of alien-like life, and a multitude of intelligent, robotic-like beings that exist throughout the universe and various combinations thereof? Yeah, guys have to think outside the box here. Because here's the thing, too. For those of us who make jewelry, and you've got the beating. This is kind of like the same sort of process that is going on. There is and a machine Victoria, creating Victoria, us. You made some nice jewelry. 
Oh, thank you. I love the Chatisti Spria jewelry that you make. Thank which, you. Which, by the way, is for sale for... What were you selling it for? <laughs> yeah, look, Victoria likes making jewelry. So we told her, if you make the jewelry, uh, maybe we can do something with it, you know? Like, we can touch it. And, and now everyone's going to get mad because they say, oh, they're just doing the sell stuff. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they, you know, the, the, they spend a lot of time doing this stuff. Maybe you should buy some jewelry. You should go to whentheancientspeak.com and you should check out the different Shatisti Spria, which means three in spirit, yes. very special jewelry. And it makes a wonderful gift. In fact, you met one of your friends that came up through here that, that is on yes, your page. I gave one Yeah, you gave a set to this person. And for I'm, his wife. Yeah, and she loved it. And guess what? She had been a real battle axe up until then <laughs> and he told us uh, told Victoria that um, what happened was he gave the joy to her and she was nice to him for a few days I'm sorry it wore out but if you bring it back to us we'll touch it again and it'll be good for a couple of days yeah that was a nice thing you guys did I know everyone's going don't be mad it's just, if you want something neat and cool go ahead because it will help them and not that they really need the help but it just helps pay the bills, right? Is that something that we can say? Or is yeah, that being internet. too commercial? No, I, I, no, not really, because I'm we sorry, still we pay did, internet. We didn't tell her we were going to say this stuff. No, no. This, look, they have been told numerous times by me that the spirits say whatever hey, they want. listen, you cheap son of a bitches. <laughs> Get to that page and buy a few of these things here. Come on. <laughs> You've been listening to us all this time. She can't say it, so I will. Uh, it would be helpful. Okay, a few bucks here and there, plus you get some really nice jewelry. And here's the best part. You never know what the jewelry can do. <laughs> well, but I'll always be something good. I, I'm not saying anything, okay, because that's you guys, and that's what you do sometimes. And and... Sounds like a snake oil salesman to me, uh, there, Stevens. Come on, don't push these people. If they want something, they'll get it. Yeah. That's right. If it means that much to them, they will go and do it because their heart tells them to and uh, because their spirit tells them to and because their mind tells them to. Not because we, I've got a few spirits on the other end being uh, their usual selves. Listen, I want to tell you guys something. Some of the spirits have already told me and we will apologize for not getting on uh, Discord. Yeah, Discord. Uh, we apologize We've just had a few delays here in our house, so we've just had to sort some other things out first. But we will. Now, if they published the magazine, but I won't tell you what it is. And, you know, they got a brand new edition coming out, so they've been working on that. You can tell them, Victoria. They've been listening for a while, so they know that you're not a shyster. You work hard. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I've been doing this magazine for, hmm, come March will be our sixth year. You know, so it's not... Exactly, and what we do is I send it out every month to people's emails. So that's another reason why if you want to be involved, it's I talk about all kinds of organic growing, permaculture, farming, anything that can be a way of benefit to your health. And some of you guys have seen some of my posts. I even put a little picture up of my new baby uh, cannabis plant. So it's... She's growing a pot plant. <laughs> Yeah, well, this is... Uh, Jesus Christ, that's just one. It, for now, it's one. And we wanted to do an experiment. Because you can get... Uh, there, there's some benefits. Uh, I mean, uh, for those of you that may think that it's just a drug or something, it's actually a very powerful medicinal herb, yeah. and it has literally thousands of curatives, mm -hmm. which have been used since the dawn of time. So you've been bamboozled about that, too, and basically it was designed to suppress the healing capability so people would have to buy pharmaceutical drugs. I've seen hummingbirds drink the nectar. Now, I've grown this before. Yeah. I've grown yeah, hemp they before. they had some problems flying away, though. No, they did not. They were, hemp flowers. They, they were bumping in the windows and stuff. No, they were coming off the male flowers. We had the hemp. They were stoned out of their mind, man, buzzing <laughs> around. They were not. They're dive bombing everybody. I saw that video. <laughs> yeah, so I've done this before. I grow the hemp and uh, we put it in a, you know, like it's screened in porch area in the back because that's, you're allowed to do that in the state of Colorado. And these plants don't need 
other than just a lot of sunlight and a little bit of water. I know people go off about the water stuff, but I'm not into the huge growing aspect. Mine are 100% organic. I don't spray them with anything. I let nature take care of them and I fertilize them. So if you want to know what I use, I think I told you guys on the post, but I use the Happy Frog because it has natural <laughs> bacterial compounds in it. <laughs> yeah, they think that's funny. I have uh, a happy frog, all right. It's going to be a stone frog. <laughs> you guys are really on the ball today, I tell you what. There's no way I think we just all got together today for a big bowel movement. Uh, ah, listen. Don't uh, start the nasty stuff the again. We got really sick of that. Listen, that's the one thing we've asked you not to talk about. I know you love uh, doing it. No, not all the time. But I don't want you to do that too much. It's it's not nice, you guys. guys. Are nasty. I don't, yeah. I don't want to hear about it. This has been a great conversation up till now. You ruined it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bitch. Hey! And that's another thing. Uh, Stop calling the female spirits bitches, okay? They're, they're, they're bitches. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, I'll kill you, bitch. Get over here. <laughs> this is the way they are, okay? I've warned you guys plenty of times. This is the way they are, and they just tune in whenever they want. Mike is a channel, and we've always been very perfectly honest with you. I do not channel as many anywhere near what he does. There's like three for me, and that's it. And these beings are connected to me in different ways. So when Kashti came... The other day and spoke to you all I actually had tears in my eyes that's how did you remember everything she said I remember sometimes you have full recall but yeah it depends for me it depends how strong she overlays me with her energy sometimes it's very intense and other times it's like she just touches me on the head and I can translate with her that way. I don't know how it works, but it's all to do with your third eye. So when she came the other day, I could feel her sadness. It was so deep and I could feel her urgency in her voice. And I had tears when she left and just thinking about it now actually makes me well up a little bit. It was that passionate and I have not known her to be that way for a long time and it was very sedate and calming because she just needed to tell you that we don't have too long hey. and those spheres can do things to us can you hurry up we want to watch South Park I'm not watching South I'm, Park right now I don't think so we're South having Park. a we're having an intellectual conversation if you guys want to watch South Park you, uh, you know uh, yeah just tell them just, can you just wait a few minutes I mean, really. Let's put a chick flick on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like the notebook. <laughs> oh, Christ. They all run away now. Mm -hmm. That's how the females and I get rid of them when they're just overbearing. We go yeah. chick flick time. Yeah, I like Under the Tuscan Sun. That was a beautiful. Oh, yeah. Wasn't that and nice? I really love that one with Mel Gibson in it, What Women Want. Because... Oh, that's funny. <laughs> hey, even guys like that one, it's really funny. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we do this to them. We torment them back because they can be quite... Some of the males can be crude and vulgar, and there's only that so you're much... you kidding me, let me tell you. <laughs> I, I can't believe what jerks they can be. <laughs> yes. And they can give the females a really hard time. And they, get, and they do it to me, too. You know, I've... Um, <clears throat> I wake up in, in the middle of the night sometimes and there's this one spirit that comes to my bed and he throws things on me, but it's not heavy stuff. It's like, you know, maybe a banana. I'm like, what? Last time it was a banana, a loaf of bread, uh, oh. some shirts, socks, you know, and we, I, <laughs> I, I, I call him the fall guy. <laughs> and I'm like, stop, stop. And I don't want to project my energy onto them because... You know, sometimes this dimensional thing, it can actually interact with them and you can hurt them. So I'm like, stop it. So they are, they have to go and get him to stop. Uh, look, our house is crazy, I'm telling you. you. You know, for most people, it would be terrifying what we're saying and listening to this. Yeah, but we grew up with but it. So <laughs> we have grown up with this. And to us, you know, we are those kids that always say, look, Mommy, I can see... You know, I've got a special friend, and uh, he's doing things, and he's playing a ball right now. We actually see those things when you're a kid. 
My kids grew up with this stuff, so in our family this is normal, and we're sorry that a lot of you think we're demonic or we're bad people. But we're not. We're not. We're good people, and we're giving you information that is vital to your survival. And maybe information that you couldn't get anywhere else. So some people may think that it's con you know contaminated or corrupt, but you have to look at the fruits of what we're producing here. We're you know uh, we could like I said, Victoria and I have already turned down movie offers. Uh, we've been on the radio, but we don't want to sell out that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, if every now and then one of the beings tells you to buy a piece of jewelry or something, we're not looking to scam anybody or do anything like that. We really sincerely want to put this information out because we truly believe that not only everything that we're telling you is true, but that it is absolutely critical that people know these things for their own survival and preparation and possibly learning how to pass into the next dimension, which is going to be absolutely unbelievable when we get there. And believe me, we've all earned it. We've all been you know, living lives on this planet, you know, living and dying, being reborn again over and over and over and over. We've earned it. We've paid our, our penance. We've paid our dues. So now it's time to move forward as humanity. But humanity 2.0. Yeah, it has to be a different way. We can't take all of that garbage with us into the fifth dimension. You know what's really interesting that we talk about that, taking your garbage and leaving it here. We've been watching some of these abandoned homes where people just leave everything. They just, they leave a house full of furniture. They leave re food in the refrigerator. Oh, yeah. Hey, listen, you, Vic, you should share some, maybe a few of the links. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, to see, it looks like basically people just vanished. Yeah. And uh, some of these places are out in the middle of nowhere, and they've been abandoned. I mean, their houses filled with things, and, mm -hmm. like, there are even dishes on the table. Mm -hmm. And, like, food that is, yeah. is, like, 20 years old, it's just really cool. And it really kind of it feels kind of creepy, but it's really interesting. So, Well, I've asked about that, and I have been told that, yes, some beings that are here on this planet have been taken. And those beings, depending on their knowledge sphere and who they knew and what they were connected to, were taken for breeding programs elsewhere on other planets. Now that would make sense to me because a lot of people are abducted and they say that DNA testing and other things are done to them. Well, a lot of the time that's not the good beings. I want you to know that. That's not what good beings do to you. They don't abduct you and they don't do things to you without your permission. That is one thing you must know. That's the difference, and they don't hide on it behind eyes of a human when they are really a reptilian pretending to be a savior uh, to humanity. So I want you guys to know that there is so much deception right now, but the things that we are telling you are things to help you survive what's coming. Uh, we know that once these spheres start moving closer to this planet, our time limit is very short. The window, the time has been sped up. This wasn't supposed to occur for quite a, a few more years, but it's happening now. And there are reasons because a lot of you are reading or you're watching videos about these strange noises going across the earth, right? These trumpet sounds and these thumps and booms going on in the earth. You guys, are you going to talk about this? Because I know this sounds so out there, but if you're reading Admiral Byrd's accounting of Antarctica, he wrote about a giant mothership was down there. They're waking it up. Yeah, we already told you guys that there's a ginormous ship that's down there. And, and what they're doing is they, they turn it on, fire it up every now and then. But it has all these tendrils that go all through the earth and connect around so that it can actually, when it, when it turns on its power, um, uh, it, it can actually uh, use electromagnet energy to move and turn the earth in a way that uh, will allow the earth to move through the universe. Now remember, uh, everything that you have in your overlay is also projectors and now they can clearly be seen by a lot of people. They're seeing all the, you know, the, the pink patterns from yeah. the reflective glass. Well, what they're doing is they're actually moving the Earth. The Earth is like a gigantic spaceship, the way that it's connected, and it can move. 
and it swims through the ether using its electromagnetic uh, torques that, and distortions. So, um, and then there's also uh, other ships that are escorting the planet, and this is what you're seeing, but remember, that they're just escorting it. You're actually seeing your solar system and everything else, that's the overlay. Yeah. Okay, and, and that's what's going on. And when you are repositioned into a new position, the Earth is going to be um, um, evolved, and then they're going to uh, open up the dimensions at that point, and Earth will be reconditioned. It's sort of like taking your car into the shop. You had to get out of your car for a while and go sit in the waiting room. So, well, at, in this case, it's ship so big that your waiting room is where you're at. So um, they're, they're doing repairs and fixing things, too. And then there's a bunch of species that live underneath the Earth that control a lot of the machinery, and without them, the ship can't move. So that's their job, to uh, be able to work on the internal machinery that keeps the Earth going. Now, it's not a, a, just a big ball of energy and nothing else down there. There is a big ball of energy down there, but it's a tiny sun. And, and they use that, and that's part of their, their power source that they use to control everything that happens to the Earth, because the Earth generates its own magnetic field. Well, how do you think that happened? So they made this BS story, there's a big ball of iron oh, down cool. there, and what that is is that's actually the shielding around the huge cities that are down there, so you're just picking up this energy that's bouncing back. Oh, it's a big ball of iron. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> Come on. Everyone, you can't be that stupid, but some people oh, are. Yeah, and there's some really mean people out there, you know. I had this guy come on the Facebook page recently, and I don't know if any of you seen it, but I just not only removed his post, but I banned him. Because I don't have to hear from people who claim to be Christian, but can be some of the most vile human beings on this planet. And he had told me, this is how the evil, the evil darkened beings and demons are going to spread this lie because of the whole Jesus thing. Yeah, really. Well, let's talk about that for just one second. Boy, it's going to be like a two-hour podcast. You yeah, might we'll have to part, part to it or something. Yeah. Um, well, let, let me ask you this. Let's take a look at what's going on. Now, for the last, oh, I don't know, 5,000 years, because that's supposedly, you know, your recorded history. Haha, <laughs> what a joke. It goes back millions. But anyhow, um, uh, what has religion done to this planet? Hmm? Do you think it has it unified humanity? No. Has it brought everyone together? And that includes Christianity, too. Okay, let's face it. Uh, the Crusades and a bunch of other things. So before you get too hung up on your religion, ask yourself, what are the fruits of that religion? What has happened to humanity? Are we better people because of it? Or are we more divided than ever? And that's what they want from you, to be divided. Yeah, well, so anyway, this guy was lecturing me about what I do. I tried to explain to him that I pass messages along and that, you know, this is what we were supposed to do. He, and I'm sorry that he couldn't open his mind to see this truth, that I am not the only one who can do this. There are a lot of people who can do this, but there are also a lot of fakes out there. And the problem is a lot of people will worship the forces of dark. I stand up to them. I always have. Uh, and so because I do that, and I want to tell you that, honestly, I've gotten some respect from them because I do stand up to them, and I never tell them I am afraid of them. As a matter of fact, you know, I actually say I'm not afraid of you. And they respect that. They'd rather talk to me than most of those who grovel in feces to want to be around them. They don't even like them. You should hear some of the terrible things they say about them. So if you stand up to them, they end up having respect for you. So they come to us because we are respected. And they talk to us all the time. And, you know, there's a lot of, excuse me, but there's a lot of asshole spirits out there who do some terrible things to us. But if you are not afraid of them, they can't touch you. And the terrible things that they do to us is not because we try to channel them, but because we won't channel them. And we have been on the receiving end of just some crazy, unbelievable crap, precisely because we will not allow evil beings to channel through us. And there are ways that you can know that the being you're about to talk to is evil or good. And this is like anything in life. When you develop a skill, for example, channeling, now some people are just, they're just born to do this. Apparently I was, I, I absolutely hate it, 
Okay, because I, I feel like I lose myself all the time into all of these other, you know, beings. Half the time I don't remember what they say, although, and then the other half of the time I know what they've said, but I, it's like, wow, that just came out of me, okay? Right. And, and, and people don't understand, you know, oh, you know, all these guys are nuts and they're crazy or something. No, 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 we're not. We're not. We're not crazy people. But if it helps you to believe that in some way, great. But it's not going to get you to the next dimension. No. We're, we're, we're here to tell you, politics and religion, you've got to drop both. Now, that doesn't mean that you, you can't spend time, you know, knowing what's going on, watching, you know, politics or stuff. Don't be involved in it. Don't involve your heart in it. The same thing with all the world religions. They were created to separate us and enslave us in different types of thought, which each different type of thought is like a different flavor of food for the beings that feed off of us. After all, if you're going to have a wonderful planet to grow people and energy, you might as well have the huge variety. Kind of like us. Yes, I think I would enjoy some Mexican food tonight. You know what? Let's go get some Chinese food tonight. It's the same for them. Yeah, they play games with us all the time. Uh, some of the wars that we've had on this planet, this is something that's been told to me, and I saw this graphic image once and it was just amazing to me and this graphic image actually was the precise thing of what happened so somebody was getting messages when they did this and it showed the gods in the heavens over a game table and we were the pawns in the game they were moving these pawns around especially they were playing war games now they love these things a lot of the alien species love games that's why they've introduced them to us too because that's what they do and they want us to compete in these war games so that they can find the best warriors and put them out there in real life and it shouldn't be a shock to people that of course as humans we replicate that in our world for example um, the series Spartacus yeah. which is based on reality okay you had the elites, and then you had the slave, and you had the gladiators. Uh, these were people that were used for their skills and talents and were trained to be these incredible warriors. But they were basically used as pawns by the elite for their entertainment, their fun, and their games. And it's just an extension of what the alien races do. Now, th that's why the Earth is so interesting to them, uh, because a lot of them are involved in different ways in what the Earth is, how to keep it the way that they like it, and also how to terraform the parts they don't. The difference is now that there has been a separation of distinct beings who no longer want us to be involved in these horrific games. And they've said, enough. You've played them long enough. We don't want these humans to suffer like this anymore. You have no right to take this from them. So they're trying to open your awareness they're trying to open your hearts and they're asking you to see things from their point of view in the universe everything that you know currently in fantastical ways as a child you read those stories they want you to know that those things actually exist in the universe good and bad so we're talking about these things that you don't want to even comprehend but they are coming through into our reality now and doesn't that make sense with a marvelous creator that we have would a marvelous beautiful creator create a huge universe that goes on and on and on and on uh, for uh, uh, essentially infinity and multiple dimensions and then not populate it with anything how how can Christians believe this? That's one question I have. And, and I'm not attacking Christians by any means. I've got to tell you, if I had a choice of, of hanging out with uh, any particular type of religious person, it would probably be a Christian. Because at least I know they believe in the Ten Commandments. So, yes, there are many good things. And by the way, the, the commandments were given to us by the Anunnaki, but that's a different story. That's all what together. we were told by Yeah, them. that's what they told us. We talked to the Anunnaki. That's what they told us. I wanted people to understand that the spirit realm and the universe are on similar wavelengths. That it all ties in. The spiritual realm is basically a recycling center 
that allows you to be re-injected back into the universe again and to choose a new place that you want to be. Kind of like if you're playing a game and you're, you, the character you're playing gets killed and then the character can be brought back in because you had extra lives or something like that. It's kind of like that. So I want you to understand the connection between the spirit realm and also what people would perceive as the universe, other beings, other aliens, other dimensions, they're all interconnected. So that's why people say, well, I don't understand the spirit realm. How, how come you guys are connected to you know, these alien beings too? Well, because it's, that's how it was intended to work. This is, you should understand, this is the reality of the religion and everything else that's kind of put scales on our eyes so that we couldn't see these things. Yeah, I just want to talk about we get these people that come onto our Facebook page or, and they're just so rude. I didn't finish that point before. And I don't want to say all Christians are bad because I've met some pretty nice ones recently. And I will say that here's what we've come to understand that even though, and I've put a whole explanation on our website about this. And let's just talk about the Anunnaki right now because the the target of certain individuals' speeches, and they want to always go back to the ancient Sumerian ways of slavery. And I'm going to admit that there is truth to all of this, okay? I'm not doubting this. That is the truth. But I also want to tell you, since that time, our earth has changed, and they also have changed. People change. If a human being can go from the lowest point of their life, can they not lift themselves up out of it? And have you not seen our own species do these things to become great individuals, to champions for those Hallelujah, people? Hallelujah, baby, preach it. Right. I want to put that as an example as what is happening through the universe. You must understand there are not just bad Anunnaki because I have met some of the most amazing Anunnaki, and they have inspired me. They're beautiful women, and there is a council now of seven females who run the Anunnaki, who take care of a lot of the problems, and one of the highlights that one of the young Anunnaki women called Elizabeth is very intent on making sure that human beings understand she wants the best for us and she is fighting on our behalf. There are good beings in this, like Aya. They're all part of the guardians of light. For every bad thing that has happened on this planet and been done to us, they are trying to undo. So I want you to understand what you are hearing all the time about the Anunnaki is not true. It is propaganda and it is coming from the darkened entities who do not want you to know these things. It is coming from those who would rather keep you in your sleep and state so that they can harvest your souls. But I am here to tell you that there are champions in this universe who are here to help you. And it's not just the Palladians and it's not just, you know, other goodly beings. There are greys out there who are also working on behalf of goodness. There are Anunnaki who are doing that for us. There are even some reptilians that are on this planet trying to undo what their brethren have done. Yes. So please open your minds. We are changing our dimension right now. And if you cannot understand those things, if you're going to be freaked out by what really goes on... You know, Star Trek, that is telling you the truth of where human beings are going to go. That was the way we were supposed to be. We are supposed to be a, a species that goes to help others. And if you can break out of your religious, political mindset, you can be champions for other humans in different parts of this universe. And for me, I want that. I want to do those things. I want to go explore. I want to help others. Don't you? As a new being? I mean, really? Well, uh, hmm. I don't think I can top that one, so I maybe should wrap it up here. You guys have talked about everything today. Uh, plus, plus, you had a lot of guest stars on. Um, and this is Stephen A. Jones thanking all of you for your time today. And I want you to think, Stephen, 
later on today. And if I hear you, I'll come and say hello. Uh, but keep in mind this. You are the arbiter of the things that will take place in your own life. You determine where you're going to end up. Even if you have to fight against events, uh, disasters, other things that take place in your life, know that you are eternal, you are beautiful, and you will be a champion too. This is Stephen A. Jones wrapping it up. For when Bye. the ancients speak, say goodbye, Victoria. Goodbye, everybody. Say we love you. We love you. And stay in joy. Remember what I said. Got to think good things. And don't forget to get some damn jewelry. <laughs> Bye. Bye.